Good morning, everyone. I'd like to welcome you here today on this nice hot day here in August. And it is Tuesday, August 22nd, for the Jackson County Board of Supervisors meeting. And first on our agenda, well, we better do some few introductions here if we have anybody new. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Don Schwenker, Dan Flagel, myself, morning. Mike Steinis, or your county supervisors, Lisa Smith, our county auditor, Bjorn, our IT director, Luann Agoki is our um, executive assistant. What's this? Microphone. Microphone. <laughs> Nobody wants to see the top of your head. Your first day. Something's <laughs> <laughs> pretty bright. They stared at the sun. I've been there for quite a while now. Is this your first day? <laughs> it's it's up, right? I just, I just noticed up. that. I didn't know that was there. No, it got moved up. It was back there. Wasn't there's it? two of them here. Yeah, 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 so it got moved up. So, with that all being corrected and figured out, we got uh, established. Yeah. Uh, uh, tell Mr. Mr. Todd Keeney, our Jackson County engineer. Good morning, Todd. Good morning. Okay, so first couple things uh, two utility permits, one for Lamont Telephone uh, for installation along Centerville Road. I'm going to plow in the ditch and then bore when they cross under to the property that they're going to serve. So, it's recommended approval. Uh, there's two for Lamont Telephone. You want to do them together or separate? You can, you can do it together. Do it together. All right. The other one um, is uh, where they're going to probably, they're going to, I think there will be trenching along the edge of the road, the shoulder, um, and then in the ditch when they can, because there's more, there's rock along this particular, uh, where they're going to be installed along here, uh, north side of Centerville Road to get to a new house. So, I mean, recommend approval of both. Okay, did you do Centerville first, or did we do that twice, or did I misunderstand? Well, Centerville first. No, I talked about, uh, it's, it, the other one was Sieverding Road, right. the first one I talked about. You just flipped them. Yeah, so okay. Sieverding Road is where they're plowing the whole ditch, and then boring when they cross under the road to get to the to the property, and then Centerville is the one that they'll probably have to be in the shoulder for part of it because of the rock that's there. The actual better, you know, whatever, limestone, federal rock. Make a motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and second to approve Lamont Telephone's request for, for utility permits as presented. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. All right. Uh, next item on the agenda is uh, a program and budget amendment. Um, so I Kind of talked about this way back when when we were having the meetings about the the secondary road assessment district for 308 street so that's one of the main reasons so we need to get this project put on the five-year program which this amendment does and then also we need to change the uh, expenditure light item under the new construction code 020 to authorize or increase the expenditure to do this project there's two other things we edited um so we got money for the, the Channelworth Bridge, um, and we had it in 26. That was the $2 million we got. And we were, and Moorhead uh, was not on the program, but we added it to the program and flipped years um, because we moved the Channelworth Bridge. Um, no, I'm sorry. I got that reverse. <laughs> We get the, the Moorhead Bridge. We got the, uh, no, we didn't. We moved that. Moorhead, we moved to 27 because we didn't have money for it, okay? Uh, we moved it to 27. We're going to hopefully apply for the $2 million to get that funded. So that's then moved to fiscal year 27. It was already on the program, but we moved it back a year. The Channel Bridge um, was not on the five-year program, and now we added it to the program and put it in um, so that we can potentially uh, uh, get the award money for it. Did I say mm -hmm. that right? We yeah. got the award money so for that one. We got the award to, money. So that one's going to 26, channel work. Yes. So we can get it done. And more hits you with the 27, and you're going to apply for that. That what he said. Yeah, yeah, yeah we got that. Yeah. That wasn't so hard, Todd. I don't know why I can confuse it. I have a question. Why didn't we apply for that money for Moorhead? 
Uh, because the other bridge had so if there's a priority point like oh so it was worse Santa Ward was worse Santa Ward's had the higher priority point so we applied for that one we got that one now we're we're gonna be applying for the other bridge okay and it's gonna hopefully move up the the points list I okay do when you apply for them do you apply for them like in a package with other so I I originally set five in and I got an email back from local systems that we can apply for one at a time. <laughs> so. Like your nice initiative. try. Initiative. Yeah. So that's that's the, the gist of the amendment. Sorry for the my confusion on the explanation. Um that's an action item for the resolution, correct? Correct. So that is resolution 986-08-22-2023. So moved. I'll second that. I have a motion and a second to approve resolution 986-08-22-2023. Secondary road construction program and budget amendment. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Okay. And then just a quick update on the road retrieval and re-rocking work. Uh, they should be finishing up uh, area or district nine this week. Uh, they'll be going to district 11 and then 10 and they'll be done. So all in all, I would say that we are ahead of the schedule that I kind of envisioned at the start of the year. I thought we would be working through you were thinking October. The end of October. And I'm gonna guess we'll be done sometime in September. Are you gonna to try to do any more or are you just leave it in well, how much more money are you gonna give me? Did yeah, you use it all? <laughs> huh? Just because you had it don't mean you use it all. Did you use it all? Oh we're running a little bit over on the rock. So okay. 10 miles per district at 6,000, or excuse me, 600 ton per mile, about 6,000 ton per per 10 miles per district. And I'm going to guess most of the time we're running in the upper sixes to get it done, which we'll, we'll tweak our estimates. I mean, that. so what happens is, you know, you're spreading your rock over a certain distance. Sometimes they spread it a little, little the density is a little heavier. Sometimes, you know, if you get a little rain when you're doing it, you need a, a little more one inch clean or something. But it's so it's just an estimate. You know, we're saying 600 ton per mile, but, it you know, it's it's not exact. So will we do additional miles? Possibly. We'll see. The only it's going to be a game back, time decision. Yeah, the only you know, we back. are coming into grain, grain season. Right, again, so. right. We're going to get busy. We did change a few things. Uh, some of the, the guys, the uh, lead men said, hey, like we say we did just as an example, there was like say a three mile section of the road and we did two miles of it because it was the heavy less traveled road part of the that three miles. And they were like, hey, you know, can we just finish this last mile so we have to come back to it? And that way the whole stretch of the road is done. And then we took a mile from somewhere else to do that. So we did tweak a little bit of it just to where it kind of made logistical sense to do that so we don't have to come back to that road because we're there we're doing it let's just do the whole stretch from say one intersection of a paved road to another from another gravel road intersection that kind of thing so by and large i get not, i get a lot of compliments on the gravel roads people are talking they like it i did get one complaint the guy drives the trash a garbage truck and he says the crown makes it more of a challenge so but like that's the only feedback I have had too, either by phone calls or by the word on the street. You know, it's holy cow, you know, what that crown. How are you going to keep it on the road in the winter? Well, it should be a lot easier for us to scratch some gravel too if it's on top of the middle of the road, you know. Um, I mean, that's where I seen a couple of them where I drove already, where, and I don't know how soon afterwards we keep grading, but that gravel gets spread out pretty fast, you know, gets to the edge of the road, which we got to keep it back in the middle, you know, back in the center. So I did get have, some rain to have to settle. I said, just be patient, bro. <laughs> yeah, if you get a couple of decent rains and a couple of bladings and traffic gets on it, I mean, it's going to be the, as far as the density and how it drives, it'll be just like it was before. But except now, it'll shed water. You know, right. I did have one of the guys comment. Uh, we had just done a road and we had pulled a lot of material in, and he was really worried because we had a bunch of rain came in. And thinking the road was going to be real greasy and slimy, and he couldn't believe how firm it was the next day after the rain. I'm like, well, it's because the water ran off the road. Business. Yeah. So anyway. All right. That's all I got. Yeah. Thanks, Todd. All right, then. Do we have any visitors or citizens that would like to approach the board this morning? I don't see anyone online, correct? And anybody here? No. 
So next on our agenda is Becky Chapin, our human resource administrator. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Is this to be passed out or no? That's just me? that's just two copies of the right now. Special, special for you. Oh, you got the sandwich. So I'm just here today because over the last year we have been working under a 28 year agreement with Clinton County for the sharing of engineering services, and that agreement is going to expire at the end of this month. So Clinton County and Todd have so graciously agreed to extend the 28 um, to maintain that mechanism of us having an engineer for September 1st of this year through August 31st of 2024. Should you so wish to renew the contract, you have those two copies in front of you. So I would just ask for any discussion and or a motion to approve. And the only change was a, a little increase in the salary. Was like, right. So we're still split at the 46% that we were. So ours is just adjusted to pay the 46% of what his salary and benefits are. Very good. So um, he's still sitting here, so it's hard yeah. to comment. But you know, <laughs> <laughs> oh, we don't have any problem talking. Right? <laughs> so I just want to say, I mean, the comments that I've heard, of course, is is all been positive. Um, I, I haven't really heard anything negative to the point, and I pass a lot of my calls on just directly to the engineer's office at this point. It, it never used to be like that kind of, you know, so they didn't get a lot of satisfaction. So I would say Todd's really good at explaining and having communication and having actually his his staff, his assistants have been the last couple of calls I've taken. I've directed him right to his assistant and uh, and that worked out. I and mean, we all met with um, concerned landowners, if you will. And uh, no, so it's just a positive uh Positive relationship with the community, I think, right now. So yeah, I agree. The department is definitely being set up differently for for long term success that we haven't seen. So I think it's a good thing. No, I worked with them this week. Matter of fact, or was it last last week? Sorry, was it that tree? The break got that figured out. No, I, I you know, and I can really appreciate him um, mentoring um, the assistants and preparing him for what may be in the future, hopefully, and. Uh, like I said, the the I know his assistant had met with a couple of individuals that called me personally and worked out good. So I make a motion to approve the 28 agreement with Clinton County in regards to Todd Keeney. I'll second that. I have a motion and a second to approve the 28 agreement with Clinton County as presented. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried. And once you sign both of those, you can give them directly back to Todd and they can take action in Clinton County. Are these Mind to sign or is this Yep. You three and Lisa, and then, like I guess I can give it back to Todd and then they can take action on that. Appreciate it. Then Anything thing, else? Yeah, I just have, we have a new employee with us today, so I was going to call Mike up. So Mike Stern from Bellevue, Iowa, is our new EMS coordinator. He started with Jackson County last week, so I just wanted to present him in front of the board and let uh, the citizens know the face with the person. He has housed himself over at Penrose. We've kind of made an office for him and um, we're kind of working on coordinate scheduling. He's already done some trainings and he's been active in the region five already. Um, we'll get a calendar set up where you guys can be um, seeing what his schedule is right now. We're just kind of emailing back and forth until we get that in place. Um, and we are um, just going to kind of work through whatever we need to work through to keep him moving here. Yeah. First thing is, did she pronounce that right? No, she, 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 no, she asked I right. her on this, but she just, she asked me before she came in, and I right. said, if you want to be professional and say it correctly, it's Sturm. But if you want to say Jackson County wise, it's Storm. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, we, it's always been stormy to us. Yeah. yeah. So there's like, there's about six or seven of them. They're all stormy. Uh, absolutely. So, well, no. politically correct, he's Storm. Yes. So, you know, I guess like we've, we've talked before, and I suppose a, uh, that we've talked to this about Becky and, and such is about accountability. Um, yeah. We were a little short the last time, I think, on accountability, so we just kind of know. And not only that, but for safety reasons, we kind of like to know where you're at. You're out there alone in these situations. and yeah. Absolutely. I and mean, this job, you know, requires bouncing around to different agencies, and each day is a little bit different. So um, we have a association meeting tomorrow night, which um, I've been a part of the association for many, many years, but um, this will be my first one as EMS coordinator. So um, kind of reporting to that board as well and seeing 
what their requirements and what they're looking for and how they want me to, you know, kind of report and be With that being to. said, Michael, am I correct in saying you were the president of the board and now you have to step down from that position? That yes, right? that, that is correct. Um, so um, so we're gonna have to call a special meetings since it was only that a week and a half overlay between the two jobs. Um, tomorrow night it'll be official that I'd be resigned and someone else would be uh inserted as president. One of us usually come, but we won't be here. Yeah, that's right. One thing that Mike and I did kind of talk about with him being over there was mannequins and those kind of things. If there was storage space available, that he would be able to house some of his things. I didn't know what the basement situation was over there. We'd have to come up with some space in the basement here. They were just looking that the basement over there might be. I guess you'd have to make your own better judgment on that. I guess Michael, as far as carting them up and down the steps, I know the steps nice and wide, but uh, sure. Um, I don't know what Lynn has for availability for that kind of stuff either, but. You know. and, and and the office over there is uh you know larger than what I expected when we when I asked that. So some of the um uh, has some storage area. It, it may be long term, maybe kind of just short term where I'm taking stuff from here to there, you know, this yeah. week. Um so it just as it plays out right now, I think we're good. Um, but that was just kind of the generalized question on what's available. So I really like the email that you sent out to each department and each EMS or each service as to asking. What are your needs? What What do you need from me? And what and What do you have in the past? And was, right. It was a good survey to have just to say, yo, what What do you need? Yeah, and now I, I, you know, loosely been involved in that, being with the association prior to sure. um this job, uh, but I didn't know exactly what um you know each individual service was looking for. And maybe their needs have changed since. Um, this position was last filled. You know, there's so. quite a difference from the Makoga to Bellevue service per se, the, the Baldwin Mountain service or something, and they all have different special special needs. You know? absolutely. absolutely. So, um, and to get a little bit, you talked about accountability, get some of that stuff um, written down of what they, you know, expecting so that um, they can't, you know, come back and say, oh, we thought you were doing this. Um, you never told me, you know, you wanted me to do that. Type of deal too. So, um, and the follow up to that survey, um, Mike was, I'm going to meet with them in person to discuss in detail. So that's just kind of a high level. So I can have some information prior to our in person meeting. I mean, I've been kind of out of the loop for the last 10 years of it. I used to be involved with EMS service, but so the main thing I hear is system standards. That's what I hear. And yeah, so uh, let's get them in line. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so the, 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 the paperwork and system standards, um, driven by the state is really what's becoming more cumbersome for our volunteer services and kind of what this position is supposed to help help out and kind of coordinate, make sure that we're going united front as Jackson County forward. So um, I attended a meeting for region five uh, has a little bit of the system standards in there last Tuesday and a uh, uh, lot of work to be done, but um, sounds like we're in, a, we're in a good spot. So just keep trekking forward. I want to reiterate a word that you said, our volunteer services. So they are volunteer and we respect all the work and the time and effort that they put in for, you know, there's some reward, of course, involved in it, but uh, they're proud individuals and they spend a lot of time at it. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and they care deeply. And yeah, uh, I, I enjoy wouldn't be doing it. <laughs> right. I enjoyed working with them for the last 15, I've been doing this 15 years. So and in this new role, it'd be um, just, you know, enjoy the work with them again or continue working with them. We appreciate it. Welcome aboard. So, thank you. Anybody else? Don, I think you're the only one I don't know personally, but <laughs> nice meeting you. Yeah. 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 Stormy. Thank you. I'd be stormy to me, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it goes way back to this. <laughs> So he's between the two VA gals over in Penrose if you need to find him. So that was an open space. Thank you. 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 All right. Lisa. So this morning, I need a motion to approve the minutes of the August 15th, 2023 board proceedings as written by Auditor Smith and authorized publication in the official newspapers. So moved. Second. Motion and second. To approve the minutes from the August 15th, 23. Board proceedings as written. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carried. 
This is an annual thing, but this morning I need a motion to approve the resolution number 987-08-22-2023 to disperse $66,195.98 in federal flood control revenues collected from leased property along the Mississippi River. So, you know, this, this is one of these uh, resolutions that kind of go unnoticed, I should say. Like, mm -hmm. I kind of un unnoticed it for <laughs> several there's years. Different, there's different monies that we get, but this is kind of a, a payment in lieu of taxes. So you look at the lease properties along the river yep. north and south of Bellevue and such and other pro lease properties. So just briefly, so like the Be Bellevue Community School District and the Eastern Valley Community School District gets a loan for $21,000. Jackson County Secondary Roads is sixteen five. Uh, Bellevue Department, the fire department received some, Sevilla and Miles benefited the fire department. So, yeah, it's one of the things that's kind so of... So those are on tax-exempt lands, but they're collecting leases on it, and we uh, benefit from that. We're still providing services, obviously, but this is a way that the government kind of reimburses us back for some of those services. Need a motion to approve? I'll make that motion. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve resolution 987-08-22-2023 as presented. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. That's all that I have for the board today. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, I do not see Mr. John Hampton here. We're running a little ahead of schedule. We're on early. <laughs> and if I'm correct, yeah. Luann, are you available? I don't know that uh, Lori and or is Lynn coming back. Lori is not coming, but Lynn and Jack will be here. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. Um, today has a few things left on it. Um, at four o'clock this afternoon, um, Mike will be in Des Moines for the Isaacs Executive um, the meeting, a nominating committee. Maybe it meets at four o'clock and then you have a meeting or two after that. Um, at five o'clock this evening is conservation board meeting at Spruce Creek for Nin, which I don't think she's probably going to make since we'll be heading for Des Moines. Wednesday, August 23rd is the first day of the Isaac Annual Conference in Des Moines, starting at eight o'clock and going till 7.30. Thursday, August 24th, you'll also be at the annual conference um, it's from 8.30 a.m. until 9 o'clock p.m. The RPA meeting for that day has been canceled. Um, at noon is a Bellevue Leadership Committee meeting by Zoom for Mike. And as Mike just told us, at 7 p.m. that night is the Jackson County uh, EMS Association meeting, and that will be at the hospital if anybody is going to that. Friday, August 25th is the last day of the Isaac Conference in Des Moines. Saturday, August 26th, this is in addition to your calendar. When we had the meeting on the fireworks, Tom Yearwood talked about this club that he belonged to and how they once a year had a fireworks show. And the fireworks show is in Vinton, Iowa. It's called the Boom Fest. And it starts at four o'clock in the afternoon for any of you that want to look into that. I put it on your calendars as well and a link, I think, to the website. Monday, August 28th at 4 p.m. is an Early Childhood Iowa Council meeting in DeWitt, and then is the alternate for that. 7 o'clock Monday night is the Board of Adjustment meeting here for any of you that want to attend that. And our next regular meeting will be on Tuesday, August 29th at 9 a.m. Um, the only other bit of business I have today is um, I sent all of you a copy of the letter of support for the rural child care planning program that they asked for Mike to sign and send in and Don um, responded to me. So we at least had two people. I just need a motion to ratify signing that letter of support for them. A motion and a second to uh, sign the support letter for the rural child care, care planning program as presented, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried. That's all I have for you. Okay. Thank you. Any questions for Luann? Uh, any boards or commission reports that anybody would like to 
We did uh, have ECDC meeting at ECIA last week, and uh, everything's going very well. Last year went over last year's um, financials, of course. Um, they're in the process of hiring a new director, which is going to be large shoes to fill um, in that position. They do a lot of uh, a lot of different things, and their their grants and their programs are going well. So, I mean, it's nice to have them on board and have their assistance in a lot of the stuff we do. So, hopefully, we can get a qualified candidate. To, I know the interviews. Uh, I should look in my note in my book, but anyway, the interviews start like in three weeks, and they will. Um, I think we'll be able to participate via Zoom in some of them, and of course, it's. Confidential information until so it's over with during the hiring process. So, but everything went well. Everything was good with the um, the program ECIA and the ACDC. Going is planned. Um, we had a limestone bluffs RCMD meeting last week. Everything's going good. There's not much going on. They're looking to offer support for more people I'll looking at grants. If they're looking for administrators, they're trying to grow the limestone bluff um, uh, scope of practice, so to speak. Um, they're working with the uh, uh, Makoka River Water Management Authority as far as separating of money because limestone bluff operates as a physical agent for the Makoka River Water Management Authority that's mandated by law. And they're just trying to make sure everything's set up accordingly. They're, they're ironing the details out on that. Other than that, everything's going good there. One question I have, it is a border commission, but we got these examples of these home-based Iowa resolutions we need to pass. What do we need to do to get this typed up so we can actually pass it? I guess I don't know that. Um, I'm sorry, the home-based Iowa. The whole base style we're talking about. Do we just need a resolution. Yeah. Oh. Okay. And okay. We got three copies. So, do you know what you want in the resolution, or this is just a resolution of support? That's the first thing it is. Just saying, and we told when they came that we would support it. Okay. Mm -hmm. so we just need to pass a resolution of support saying yes, we'll do it. That's the first thing they need. Then after that, the committee, the Veterans Affairs Committee, is going to try to come up with some potential incentives for veterans that that will then come to the board if there's any kind of financial requirement. But the first thing is just a resolution of support. Do you have three copies there from three different uh, counties? Yes. And so if you don't mind, can I have those or sure. your and come up with a, a resolution? And, you know, today, with, with this week being a busy week, we'll try and get it yeah. done for next I just, I just want Yeah, to I forget sure. who was all in here. Uh, who was the name of the gal that was... With oh, Brienne came in, and the guy's name it was Jason. Jason, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they talked about it. They were at the VA meeting last a couple of weeks ago, and they were talking. And we just the first step is just a resolution of support, and uh, get we get that. And uh, yeah, so the initiative that they're doing to promote I mean, basically, it's for Jackson County, it's for veterans right. to come, come to Jackson County and live, work, and play, or whatever it may be, you know. So. And they, one of the things, the examples Jason gave um, at the VA meeting was, um, I forget what county was, uh, a, a neighboring county, they offered veterans, like, um, I don't remember if it was $1,500 down payment assistance on buying a house and all that, and they got like three takers, which ended up bringing about $100,000 worth of money into the community with property taxes and different things. And stuff. So they they said it was a program well worthwhile, and they budgeted five thousand dollars for the year, is what they did. And so it's not like they're going to potentially ask for arm and leg kind of funds. Um, it's just a few things like that to see, and they're just trying to figure out what kind of uh, incentives or how they want the incentives to apply. So that's what they're working on. But the first thing they need is that uh, resolution of support. If we can have something prepared for next week. Awesome. I think it's obvious that we support our veterans and the community, so it's important for us to keep keep them in our mind and appreciate everything they did for us. So, mm -hmm. uh, just a couple of things to update the board. Um, I know that Blue Sky Solar, our silver company for the solar array, sent that contract. We're having uh, Attorney John Keys take a look at it. I also have forwarded on to Bruce Fisher. Wanted him to take a look at it to see if he had any concerns. So I would anticipate that. 
um, in next week's meeting that we would get approval to have you initialize the contract. The one, I, the one thing I noticed in, in the contract is that the Blue Sky Solar, the, there's the $81,600 fee minus the 30% from whatever. But the 30% has to be applied for. Okay. Yeah. That, so, yeah. so far, we're batting zero so on those things. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. I'm a little nervous about first. that. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> you know, they were like, well, just subtract that 30% off. Yeah. To me, it sounded like that's just something that's a, a given, you know. Um, I'm, I, like I said, I did forward it to Bruce this morning, and I told him that if he had any uh, concerns or questions, to give me a call. And um, so I anticipate having a conversation between here and and next Tuesday, uh, as far as if it's okay. I think John has taken a look at it. We'll make sure that it's okay with him. So um, that's this the anticipation for next week. Okay. The other thing, just to give you an update uh, in regards to the 308th Street um, Secondary Roads Assessment District, there are 21. Uh, property owners, we have talked to 20 property owners as of yesterday afternoon. There is one property owner that we have not spoken with, nor have we received the funds. So I don't know if that's something that maybe would come in the mail this morning. I don't really know, but we have had uh, positive um, you know, interaction with those people. And so 20 out of 21 have responded and we have payments. So that's the good news. Cool. Yeah. No, I've I've heard from some of them. I've gotten thank yous from them, and uh, but uh, from what I've heard, uh, a lot of them have prepaid. So I, mean, I don't know the exact numbers. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. prepaid. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, if they did that, they would avoid the interest. Yeah, yeah. They made their first payment of ten. So the first payment, if you pay before, um, you know, then you that's a seven hundred dollars and thirteen cents is what we ask from people. And then uh, the remaining nine payments then will have interest at 6% added to it, which is, you know, and everybody was really okay with that. So, yeah. Yep, I've heard nothing positive things yeah. from it. So, anybody else have anything? No. Um, the other rebuild okay. is, Oops, I'm sorry. Sorry, doing a side by side ride coming up. And it's going to be a little bit different than a lot of the regular ones because they're trying to hit all of Jackson County. So they're going to do, they're still working on how it's going to all play out, but kind of not that you got to meet at one place and 150 side by sides take off from one place. It's going to be kind of more or less you just jump on wherever. Kind of, well, not even jump on wherever, but they're going to have different spots picked out. They're trying to make it kid friendly. Um, you know, maybe even people that don't have a side by side, but you know, if you can vi visit the establishments within Jackson County and be a part, and they're going to end it with um, uh, dance and stuff up at the Horseman's Club in Bellevue. So it's going to be kind of a fun event. So keep a lookout. I know they got a Facebook page going, and mm -hmm. I'm sure there'll be stuff in the papers on it coming up. I believe it's like October. <clears throat> October 14th is that one, and then there's the Warrior Ride. Speaking of veterans, on the news, but it's mm -hmm. the best thing. So yeah. And then they're also still selling. So they started off kind of with a brick idea, but now they're kind of shifting that to a tile type of deal, so it isn't so heavy on the walls. Doing a whole brick since they're putting them inside. So them are still available and they got some raffle chances for different things mm -hmm. out there yet too. So, so they had some of the visit. they had some of the tile samples at the open house. So yeah, I mean no, I know there's several people that had a brick and now they may just go to the next size larger tile because yeah. then they can still they, up their have, like, contribution if they so desire. Yeah. All right, we'll take a short recess at this time. We'll reconvene at this time, and uh, we're joined with Mr. John Hansen and Jeremy Oden from uh, Midwest Construction for an update and any business that they may have. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. So we've got some uh, concrete sidewalks being poured today, and uh, the grading is all complete on the south parking lot. And they've graded the, the bank um, on the east side behind the jail. 
Uh, Jason Cleaver would like to get the South parking lot poured by the end of the week. So he's highly motivated to do that. Um, we've got uh, our electrical inspection in the administration has been passed. Uh, Sheetrock is going up in there. Um, that's looking a lot different and everything. So they're getting ready to start um, taping and mudding that. And uh, uh, rough end continues on MEPs in the, in the administration and everything. So, um, gosh, I can get the top right there. Um, what else? We've got uh, uh, the mezzanines are poured. Yeah, and, yeah, they're and uh, they 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 come up to strength, so they ought to be able to start stripping them next week. So. Uh, we have to figure out what we want to do. I don't know if we want to go to conservation or something and see if they may have some seed available that we can get that East Bank seeded or how we want to try to handle that. Or We need to probably get something down as soon as possible on that. It's going to erode pretty bad if it starts raining. It's just all sand, you know. So... Um, I know they have some, some wildflower stuff. I mean... <laughs> I know that uh, Secondary Roads also has a some of that cedar. Adding. Well, we have a oh, give me the thing that blows, cedar. Up, blows the hydro cedar. Yeah, we have a hydro cedar. Oh, yeah, that, that would be good. Yeah, that would probably work to get you some get access to water on that because you see that right now that doesn't seem like rain's going to help us. Yeah, that's the thing. So we need to. Yeah, but if we do them. see that it's going to have to be covered, it's either going to have to be blown with straw and crimped or or hydroseeded or something. Yeah, I, I would sometimes they put blue and hydroseed to hold to the bank. But as far as water down, a lot of times they have a water tank that they pull with the hydroseeders. So I guess it would be a matter that we'd have to talk to them. And then you'd have to continue to water. But it's the go. continuous watering yeah. because, like right now, is a little. Usually they kind of recommend that more in the fall. All I've really got right now is temp water out in the Sally Port. I mean, it could be water, but you'd need 300 feet of hose to do it. I, I just don't know when the last time I'd have to talk to Todd, but I don't know that he even knows when the last time they used the hydro but Or they if they have the material. This, when they did the campgrounds down. And the I don't know how that would work either as far as them charging us. You know, yeah. They like to. I mean, we give and take with with some of our agreements for rental agreements and such, but uh, yeah, that's a possibility. Otherwise, we may have to call a professional. I don't know how we. If I can talk to Secretary Rhodes, then maybe they have some of that straw matting that we just take down to the but ground. Still have to be yeah, it's have to be seeded and well, and I'm at the matting. seeds in the mat yeah. a lot of times. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll do some checking around. I mean. You know, if we need to we're going to get that whole hillside back up. Yeah, 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 that's the thing. <clears throat> so it's finished now with with this the dozer. Is that it's not been pulverized or anything? Right, like right. That? Uh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, they've established the the grade of yeah. the bank with the dozer. So it still needs to be tuned up, probably pulverized. Yeah, but it's yeah, it's it's about all sand. I mean, we've got some black dirt that we can place on there, but. Uh, it's minimal. So do you think we need some more black there too? Or is that somebody for I, I somebody think, else to determine or before uh, it's all said and done, we we might need well, some the black there uh, is under contract, so they gotta finish grading the black dirt. So I'm not gonna buy the black dirt at back. So uh, well, yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Yeah. Uh, we'll get some more information for you guys so you have for you know, we can do some checking on possibly. Yeah, I mean, I know so we, we had, had something to start thinking about. Right. I think we had, and I don't think Marty has any kind of that type of equipment because we did this at Andrew Jackson, and mm -hmm. when we were up there a couple of weeks ago, they just love how it's done, actually. But yeah, you know. mm -hmm. okay, uh, so it's Coming along fairly well. Uh, we're trying to work with a couple of contractors to get them there. It seems like it's been uh, everybody's still behind or whatever, but it's time to take care of our project, in my opinion. So we're put, gonna put a little bit of pressure on. Uh, as far as the 
proposals that we got back for the uh, expansions. Uh, we had uh, $894,780 was original budget. Uh, we're negotiating with them. Uh, we did some negotiating with Girardi to do the stairs and railings in lieu of uh, the crews and negotiate with everybody that were approximately 150000 or so under budget on that portion of it. So uh, that will allow us to get some uh, proposals to you for some of the kitchen equipment, uh, laundry equipment, and those type of things for consideration. Try to get this project bought out and completed under that budget we had established. So, awesome. I like uh, it. So I like the thought that <clears> that's where you're going. We've been, I mean, we're just waiting on one more price and that would be for Prowse. I think you talked to them, Don, and they're going to see if they could, you know, yeah. do something with their costs, but I haven't been able to get an answer from them yet. But uh, working towards that goal. So uh, we'll have a firmer figure for you, but we are under budget substantially on that portion of it. Awesome. So the expansion uh, time frame is it really changing? The, uh, we'll the, we'll the, the, the thing that's going to change is I'm trying to push contractors to get them out of there, you know, to the extent possible, but for the locks and finishing out the locks, they're out till January. So, I mean, if we get them in January, we're going to have training to do and everything else. Uh, I'm sure that given the community interest in the project, you're going to want to have some type of open house mm -hmm. uh, prior to moving, you know, inmates in. So I, I think we need to get a permanent grip on that, but uh, I received, I received the uh, submittals on the hardware for the locks. So we're working to get them processed through and get them out back to the manufacturer immediately. So we can start confirming some dates. So they're going to push to the extent they can to get it. And there's a lot of weather factors in there that we don't know yet, depending on how this winter goes, can change things a little bit as far as moving in the, the stuff into the administration side more so than the, the, the jail side. I think we'd be able to, to move quite a bit into the administration, but uh, we'd have to have an occupancy permit, of course, mm -hmm. which uh, I think that we could get the, the state jail inspector will want that area done before he grants us full occupancy in the correctional area, but he doesn't oversee the administrative area. That'd be fire marshal. So okay. if we work with fire marshal to understand that we're going to occupy that portion of the facility, you know, we could start getting some stuff moved in there and prepared and probably actually accomplish the move if we wanted. But uh, I don't think that'll be a problem. Yeah. Okay. But, but, you know, we, we don't want to be in the way of contractors. We want to get them done and get them out of there as soon as possible. But you well, know. the admin's going to be done before the correction. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, with that being said, what does that utility building look like? I guess I haven't been there. <laughs> Is there some uh, room in there now? The doors are kept to be a lot. So, of Bruce there. Builders in the last few days this week has uh, finally been making some good progress, getting some frames in and stuff. So, Paul's out there welding right now on some frames as we speak, and his guys are windows and doors and stuff. Yeah, kind of yeah, seal it up a little bit. Yeah, so I'm starting to see the floor a little bit, <laughs> just in time to. Probably take delivery of security ceilings and fill it right back up again. So, okay. but uh, it's a rotating thing. So, no, I didn't know what floor space looked like in case we would. What was you or, had in mind, Mike? No, I just did in this looking down the future here. Just if we needed a corner somewhere, just to put some, I just yeah. Oh, temporarily, of course. Yeah, yeah. Well, those. I mean, it's going to look a lot better here pretty quick. We get all the frames out of there, and then I can start. Getting some organization and sweep and you know. Well, even yeah. and or if we get closer, you get everything out of there. We want to get our stuff organized and maybe spread it out so we can see and what we got administration can say, yeah, I can use this one. You can use sure, that one. Sure, sure. 
you know, like where some of our stuff because we won't know how much other stuff we may need or not need till we can kind of get looking it. ahead to you know in due time i'll be taking possession of all the bunks and shelves and all the detention glass and all that stuff but however we got the sally port too that a lot of times you know we'll utilize that to store some of that stuff in the process of it going in the, in the building sure, it would be closer whatever makes it easiest to the jail than as yeah. expeditious as possible. Right, you know? right. So, but no, it'll get better, you know. Yeah. So. Appreciate that. So that's yeah. fairly good news. Any questions for John or Jeremy? Uh, Jackson Brent? County. Andrew? Oh. I'm sorry, John. Jackson County Fair, that's coming along very well. Um, um, together, Bill. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we have some good contractors over there and they, they've been pushing and not complaining or whining and I just it was, <laughs> so anyways uh they're coming along all the metal studs are up all the uh, hvac duct work is probably 95 percent complete over there uh i did the get the gas should be going into both facilities gas mains and both facilities for that was the train to call me just a minute ago it was eric from black hills and uh and they're starting to drywall, <laughs> the installation's done. I mean, those guys are, are running along very well. And uh, so we're hoping that will be done in November, December. Yeah, I want to get some concrete down there pretty quick, too. I was talking to Jason Cleaver this morning. So he's pouring for us at the jail this week, and he'd like to move right into that and then come right back and pour the other side of the jail if possible. So he's highly motivated to get right. done so yeah well he's got a couple of projects in the same area well it makes sense for him i would think it's working out good for him yeah, yeah. good so no you know we've had we've had you know good working relationship with kne flat work and also allied's been doing a good job on metal studs and driving and stuff shops there so things come along and it's just you know, we, they're trying to finish up schools right now, and I'm hoping that situation will change. Well, they better so. be finished by tomorrow because it starts tomorrow. So, well, yep. <laughs> I agree with you. <laughs> so, well, so you know, appreciate the update. And uh, yeah, I know that all these projects have little bitty glitches to them here and there, but that's not that's your baby. Anymore. Yeah. So, so. anyways, okay. we probably will meet again here in a couple of weeks. We probably won't. Do pay apps next week, probably be the following week. Okay. Uh, we'll have some more information put together and go from there. So Appreciate it, guys. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you. Yeah. Have, have a good day. You guys have a great day. Stay cool, boys. Oh, we're trying. All right. As we're right on schedule, uh, looks like uh, Lori's not here, but Lynn and Jack appear to be. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Jack. Hello. And they are here for Eastern Iowa MHDS for a report from yesterday's meeting, am I correct? Yes, yep. yesterday's, yesterday's meeting. So Jack and I were in attendance and Nin tried her hardest and technology doesn't always work the best. <laughs> but she finally did get in. I did get in and then it kicked me out. Then I got in again. And then yeah. <laughs> at the very end, it kicked me out again. And I'm like, a Good one. Yeah. Well, Lori had trouble with uh, several people. I don't know what the deal is. She was really pretty frustrated <laughs> trying to get everything set up. Yeah. Sometimes I think their internet isn't actually the strongest up in that room. I think that's part of the issue. But so we did meet yesterday, um, kind of a short meeting compared to some. And uh, I was interested in the financial report. And we obviously ended fiscal year 23 on June 30th, and it looks like the projection for the fund balance is right around 56%. Just a reminder, we were to be at 20% by that date. Now, there are, um, I think, maybe a couple hundred thousand dollars in claims yet, is what they said, right. that will be accrued back to FY23. So it may decrease a little bit. The impact that that will have is, uh, as you remember, the state will not send us the total allocation that they had budgeted for us. Those uh, decrease in payments will probably occur with the third quarter payment in January and with the fourth quarter payment in April. It sounded like they were anticipating maybe no quarterly payment in January and then a partial one in April. One. Yeah. So 
Um, again, that was due largely to some services that weren't able to get up and running. Um, uh, we, the board accepted the recommendation to have Dave Hines from Juvenile Court Services be now a voting member of the governing board. The last legislative session, regions were required to add a couple of additional people to serve on the board, one representing the court system and one representing law enforcement. So the law enforcement one has been on board with the governing board for the last couple of months, uh, the police chief in Tipton, Lisa Dufour. Dave Hines is now at the um, position of a supervisor within Juvenile Court Services. So he oversees Pete, who serves Jackson County. But I think we are, uh, it's an advantage to Jackson County to have David serve on the board because he's familiar with Jackson County and he supervises his staff that serve Jackson County. So it will give us a little bit of... Um, and up until his resignation from the Early Childhood Iowa Board, he has served on it as long as I've been on that board. And um, uh, he tenured his resignation because he got a promotion and I was happy to see on the agenda that he was going to be on the on the governing board. Yeah, so I think that's great guy. For, yeah, and it's good for Jackson County because he's familiar with us. So, um, they on the agenda on your board agenda, you'd notice there was a um, possible action approval and possible action for an amended fourth 28E agreement, fourth version of the 28E agreement. That was voted by the governing board yesterday to be tabled. The reason for the tabling is when board chair Ken Beck read through it, he found a couple of discrepancies in terms of language. And he also did not care for some of the language that ordered the regions to do certain things by using terms of shall and must as opposed to can. Now, the process for this amended 2080, it's to reflect the changes that came about in the last legislative session. And so Lori had submitted the version of the 2080 to the Department of Health and Human Services and they gave it their approval. And then when Ken read it, he noticed these things that he was not comfortable with as a governing board member. Lori now needs to take it back to HHS. And Lori said that um, she kind of followed the pattern that all of the other regions used. Right. And so they all had the shall mm -hmm. also. And she said when she brought it up to HHS, they said, well, maybe they're going to have to review the other uh, 28E agreement that had been sent in to see if maybe they needed to re redo some of those as well. So, so okay. Yeah, it was a good catch. Stay tuned. And we'll see what the state's interpretation is of what the verbiage should be. They well, you know, that's always this. changing. You know, it's never say never and never say always. But, you know, I mean, it's... Certainly applies here. That's it's correct really or not correct. Yeah, I, so I we're hoping that that will be ready so that we can bring it at the August meeting or the September, the September meeting. meeting. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. So that is why it was on the agenda. Lori was going to come and talk more about it. She will try and come the next time once it is finally approved by the governing board. Uh, the board also approved the signing of a memorandum of understanding with the East Central region, which is the region immediately to the west of us. It encompasses nine counties, three of which are Lynn, um, Johnson and Dubuque County. So it's a fairly large region by population and geographic area. There is a service that regions are required to have available to their residents and it's called Intensive Residential Services Homes, Irish Homes. Uh, it's a very costly service. The intent of the service is to provide services and housing opportunities for individuals who have really struggled and in many cases burned many bridges with more traditional providers. They're a more difficult population to work with, so it takes a staff that's a little more highly trained. Um, and, and extensive services. Extensive services, yeah. Um, and we had put out an RFP within our five county region and did not get any viable applicants. So the two regions together put out a joint RFP request for a proposal. And even with that, we only received two responses, one of which was Abbey Center for Community Mental Health based out of Cedar Rapids, and they were awarded the agreement. They will be purchasing a house probably in the Cedar Rapids area, and it will house, I believe it's up to four people, four is what they said. 
that will occur in fiscal year 24. <clears throat> the second part of the MOU is for there to be a second house and that one would be placed somewhere in our five counties, but that won't be for probably at least another year. It will take Abbey Center a while to purchase a house and uh, hire the staff and then get them trained adequately. So stay tuned. It just yeah, seems then, like a minimal well, one of the things we talked about. I yesterday, mean, you take four beds or four people. That's yeah. not touching our issue here. Yeah. yeah, and we talked about the fact that um, our region would have priority in placement, but there's not many Irish homes throughout the state of Iowa. So, and they said there. Well, several people said there's a lot more need than four mm -hmm. beds. So, what's the definition of that Irsh home? Um, it's to serve a population that has difficult to manage significant mental health conditions and likely will also have a, what they call a co-occurring condition. So another type of disorder could be substance use disorder, it could be intellectual disability. Um, in our world, we kind of, we call those situations dual diagnosis or co-occurring. So these are very challenging situations that have generally uh, tried all the available, more traditional resources in the community maybe even some stays in residential care facilities where they may or may not have been successful. Uh, basically, it's kind of the end of the road for some situations. So I look at it, what the imagine the possibilities had, and to me, they closed a couple of these residential homes, I mean, in Bellevue even, and in a couple different places. I know they closed them. And they're building a new one in Macoke. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Um, the populations that are identified for the different homes vary. And the population for these Irsh homes, the reason that they legislated for these homes, and Lori talked a little bit about yesterday what the daily rate might be. Total daily rate in these homes may be somewhere between $900 and $1,200 or $1,400 a day. Uh, your typical group home that you're familiar with through Imagine, their daily rate, their per diem may be somewhere probably not much above $500 a day, but closer to a $300 to $400 a day range. The big difference in the cost of that service is the need for more intense staff, um, literally more bodies to be staffed in the homes, and then more training for those staff. And quite frankly, potentially a higher rate of pay for those staff because they are going into some situations that potentially um, residents who live there, if they have a crisis, could become aggressive, assaultive, that kind of thing. They very well might have some of that in their history already moving into these homes. And, you know, one of the things we talked about was the employees, if, you know, if we build a second one, are there, is there staff to house it? And Lori said that um, our region would pay for training or anybody that needs right. to get the additional training that they would need to work in an Irish uh, a Hirsch home. And so, and she talked about right now, they, in the budget, there's $242,190. I think that she said that they would be putting towards. Uh, That's what our region is contributing under this contract. MOU. And then uh, the East Central region is contributing 500,000. So the first, blush at this is over 700,000 just and that's basically just startup money that's to purchase a home and get it ready get it ready well, then yeah. you gotta find yeah the right staff to yes work on mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. this type of place take the kind of recent history around here is like there was a autistic person that was abusive but disqualified for that uh i guess that's the one point it's a good question we need to clarify <laughs> it's for adults only at this point so they have to be age 18 and over. As individuals age into the adult system is how we refer to it. So when they turn that magic age of 18, potentially, yes. Um, and it's even possible that these homes won't even have the level of staffing and expertise that would be needed to manage some of the situations that we've had experience with recently. Okay. Kind of sounded like, if I wasn't mistaken, they want these more in rural communities. Yeah, they which need for that. Yes. yes. Yeah. The idea is they really want that home to be integrated into a neighborhood, into a community. 
And last month they said it would probably be in Cedar or Jackson, but that was not said yesterday. Right. Yesterday they didn't talk at all no, about where no. they would place one in our five counties. Um, I know so. it's, a, it's a great expense. And I mean, you talked about some of the expenses, but I mean, it still seems like we're only hitting a minute part of the population that needs services, you know. And I also worry when you talk about the fund balance, I mean, if it's going to be at 56% and we were supposed to be at 20, we went through this for how many years, Jack? trying to legislate to keep the fund balance. You know, sure I'll go out there and spend the money, but you can't implement programs if you don't have the staff. Right, right. I can, oh, yeah. I can envision right. that three years from now, we don't have even the 20%. We had 3%. Now we're short again, you know. Well, the next step for the fund balance is 5%. That has not been changed in no. the legislation. So you're right, that, that percentage is projected to go down unless legislatively they, they would make it. Which makes change. sense. We're not we're going to tax for more than what we need, of course. But, but the <laughs> point, point being is that Ed, I can see somewhere now we're in trouble. Now we have nothing. To have. Right. So a portion, of the, a portion of the cost of this kind of service is funded by Medicaid, but they have a cap on how much they will pay. I think the cap is around $700. But the cost to the of the provider making the service available could be upwards, like I said, 1200 1400 a day. So the mental health region is required to uh, pay that pay difference. difference. Yeah. So if we get four people in a home and if the rate is around even 1200 and we have to pay $500 a day times four people times 365, then that brings to your point, that's an expense, it's a required service. And so we have to pay that, that's a priority service that we have to fund, how quickly that could begin to deplete any excess monies we've had. Right. Yeah, so so anything else on that, Jack, that you can think of as far as the... Um, no. Uh, the other thing that's of interest is there is something else that was legislated for our regions to make available and it's called outpatient community restoration. So I don't know if whichever one of you serves on Department of Corrections board, if this has come up at all at that board meeting. But um, in legislation, they are requiring regions to be responsible to have the service available within their counties in the region. This is for individuals where there is a question of their ability to be competent to stand trial for a criminal charge. Obviously, there is a um, priority in terms of who would be eligible and who we know is not eligible are the most dangerous of people that are currently incarcerated, but yet not sure that it's competent to stand trial. So it's for individuals with lesser offenses. Um, it's, the goal is to decrease the number of people determined incompetent to stand trial that are currently on a wait list for an inpatient bed. So decrease the number of people going to Oakdale or Cherokee or the, to wait for the competency testing. The service would be provided in the community. And the other goal is to increase access to the services that are needed by those individuals to restore their competency. So the best example I could give would be someone with um, maybe some charges of assault or some aggression, and they have a, a diagnosed illness, but they've not been compliant with their medication. So their behaviors are not able to be controlled. Their illness is not controlled by medication. So if they're placed into this outpatient competency restoration program, there would be a case manager, there would be a prescriber, a therapist, all that needs to be available to these individuals. And, and possible housing. And possible housing, yep. Um, and some education services as far as understanding their illness with the idea that if they were to become med compliant on a consistent basis, that their ability to understand their behaviors and the consequences of their behaviors could be restored to the degree where they could stand trial. And they may or may, may not be incarcerated if they're found guilty or you know what happens after that. But it's the idea that to not tie up um, jail beds or these beds at places like Oakdale to sit there while they wait for this competency uh, restoration effort. Um, originally, 
uh, the CEOs of the regions were told by Health and Human Services that don't worry about budgeting any money for any positions related to this in fiscal year 24 because it'll take about a year to get this up and running. Rules are not written by HHS. That was the premise on which Lori built the budget for FY24 because that's how they were guided to do so. Apparently, a judge in, I think Lori's thinking it's in the Des Moines yeah, area. If it was. Yeah. Um, read the language and said the requirement is that this became effective immediately July 1st at the start of the fiscal year. So there's no grace period to wait until the rules are written and until we get this up and running. So HHS had to scramble and develop a plan. Their plan is to kind of use Polk County as the hub. They What that means is they basically would track everybody who is referred to this program, but the actual services would need to be provided more locally so that obviously people from Jackson County, for example, aren't gonna be able to travel to Des Moines to get their services. And the, so there will need to be, likely need to be a case manager hired by the region through some employ, employer um, to serve in the capacity of a case manager. Lori's not sure if it'll be one or two, it depends on what the volume of people is because this is pretty intensive case management. These case managers gotta stay on top of all the details surrounding the services that these individuals need. So that's uh, kind of been kicked into high gear. And then it also, part of the legislation also required that they have a 40% achievement rate. Yes. Mm -hmm. Meaning that they successfully were restored so they could stand trial. Yeah, yeah. And then they're followed for six months after that to um, make sure that they continue to remain med compliant or whatever it was they needed to be restored to that. So that was kind of a curveball that came to all the regions here at the last CEO meeting. Stay tuned. Yeah. As in so many things. Uh, that's about it from the meeting that I can't yeah, follow um, you uh, there were We talked about, um, oh, let me see, um, co-responders mm -hmm. um, in all the counties and working with the sheriff's department. And um, it's relatively new that they've been doing this, but they said that they were having great cooperation with the with law enforcement and with, with the co-responders. And um, they said Jackson County's sheriff's department was right up there working huh. with them. So this is the person that's here two days a week available to all law enforcement in the county currently um, sitting in a table or whatever at the Makoka Police Department just because of availability of a space for her there that ideally we're hopeful that she would be able to have an office at the, the remaining available office at the Penrose Annex. I think that would provide for good coordination um, with the, my office and the rest of the crisis system that's here. And I think it would uh, be a nice neutral location so that no law enforcement agency has the perception that she is designated specifically to one, right, to one of the law enforcement agencies. And it would give her a place to have some confidentiality for phone calls and visits if she needed to people. She won't have an active caseload per se, does not have an active caseload. She is already in place. Um, but there could be the occasion that somebody would want to stop in to talk to her or she wanted to Question on that. Is that after we talked, I kind of came up to my head. Um, are they basically a daytime deal? Yes. It, yes. Um, the way... I mean, I would hate to see her have an office over there and be meeting right. oh, no. by herself yeah. over there no. with no other offices being right. occupied at that time. Right. I guess that, that brings up a good point. Anything, whenever I talk about any services from the crisis system, one of the um, guiding principles, if you will, for lack of a better way to reference it is wherever meetings are held, it has to be a safe place. And law enforcement is so involved in all of these things. They're embracing all of these things that they are making themselves available if necessary to make sure that a person, a staff person from the crisis system is. But no, currently this is uh, just staffed during the day. I think her hours are from like eight to four. I believe she's here in Jackson County on Wednesdays and Thursdays. Currently she shares her time with Clinton County on Mondays and Tuesdays. Uh, there is some conversation that hopefully we could get 
the four uh, four days a week here solely in our county available to county law enforcement and municipal police departments. Um, and the purpose is that she's available to go out and meet with people in the community when law enforcement get a call. And, and part of that call is in regards to someone struggling with a mental health crisis. The one thing that uh, locally the program has stepped up and uh, they are also doing what they call community policing is how the crisis system refers to it. And so what that means is when she's riding along with an officer here in the city of Nakokoda, if they see someone that they're familiar with and they would really like to at least offer some services or support to, they will pull over and just talk to that person um, in a non-judgmental, um, non-threatening way. She comes in without a uniform. She comes in from a different perspective, but supports what law enforcement is also trying to do to help people. Um, so that that's kind of the premise of the program. It's a program that you will see quite a lot in large cities, in more rural areas. Like so many things, we want to be creative so that we get the best out of that person's time. And so there's a little bit more to it that she can do in addition to just responding to calls that police get while she's here those two days. Right. It's nice if she can put some faces to the yes. together when it's not in a crisis. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. That's cool. right. So when you put them two things together, like you say, she's here to Wednesday and Thursday. So I, I would venture to think that most of our mental health crisis situation or statistics show that it was probably after hours, if you want to call it, or in the PM. Um, I know there's many variables that go into play. Link it up. <laughs> there's many variables that come into play in them situations, but a lot of these crisis happens in that time frame where, you know, who is available, you know? In the ideal world, if money was not a factor, but it's even not so much right now the money as it is the workforce concern, in the ideal world, you would have it staffed maybe two thirds of the time of each day, you're yeah. right. Or on the weekends, maybe 24 seven. Right. And certainly in larger communities, that is how they try to staff it. Um, it's a social work type position that typically fills that role. Um, so in that event, when a person is having a crisis, law enforcement still has the resources of the crisis line, the motion mm -hmm. crisis outreach and some sure. of those things. And then sometimes those individuals that have those crises on a Saturday night at midnight, those may be the same individuals that as they're driving down the street and they see them, that they will stop and introduce that person to Bree and Bree can talk to them a little bit further about um, what might be available to them. So just a lot more coordination. So I think that's all I have. So too. Well, I appreciate the update and that you stand on top of it. I know it's ongoing and ongoing. Yeah. So I hope you get your agreement put together with the right verbiage. And <laughs> it's, sort of, it's, it's constantly changing. Yeah, no doubt. Say, thanks for trying to make sense out of shifting sands, it seems. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, sometimes it shifts pretty fast. So it's kind of like the wave comes it's really in. Oh, God. <laughs> That's great. Thank and, you. Yep. And I'll be over there again if you want to stop over. Um, Bob went in and looked, we looked at a couple of things already. So if you guys want to take a look at it done too, yeah, feel free to do that. Stay yeah. cool. Yeah, thanks. You guys too. Yeah. All right, then. It looks like our agenda is complete. Anything else before the board this morning? Motion to adjourn. Okay. Yes. I have a motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Motion carried. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>